Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. What's going on everybody? We have Sheikh Aisha Prime in the house. We just finished a full seminar on arriving at contentment. And today we have her. She was generous enough to give us her time to answer some of our questions. And hopefully her answers will help benefit the ummah. And we also have, as you know, I'm the Muslim guy. And we also have the casual Muslim right here as well. And I'm going to let the casual Muslim get started with some very interesting questions for Sheikh Aisha Prime. So I think the burning question on everyone's mind is, can you give us a brief summary of your conversion story to Islam? <laughs> okay. uh, However sure, brief sure. you can make it. However <laughs> brief I can make it. Yes, please. So long story short, I was a youth ambassador to Morocco and Senegal. When I arrived in Morocco, uh, it was my first night. I was so excited just about everything that was you know, new and what, what was promising and upcoming. I couldn't sleep. Uh, and I was extremely jet lagged. And so as I was just about to fall into sleep, it's like this between being asleep and being awake, I heard the adhan go off. And as I heard the adhan, the only thing I could ever equate it to was like, somebody puts defibrillators on your chest and says, clear, right? and you're, you just have that joke. And so it sounded like he was at the end of my bed. Um, I ran to the balcony and was like looking for like, where is this sound coming from? And I remember uh, initially, I felt like, you know, as I'm listening to it, I felt like deeply inspired or intrigued by it. And then I got scared, right? Because now, now all the movies and all the images are coming to my mind, like, wait a minute, <laughs> is this a call for war, right? I'm in the Middle East, like, what is this? Um, the movie doesn't end well after that scene either. Exactly, yeah. it doesn't end well after that. And because it was being announced across the whole city, I thought, this is an announcement. So why would they be making some kind of announcement? So I ran out of my hotel room, and I wanted to go downstairs to ask the concierge what was happening. But I was shocked that nobody else was in the hallway running either, because I thought this was some kind of alarm. So I was like, why am I the only one in the hallway? So I ran downstairs to the concierge and asked him, what, what was that sound? And he said, that's the call to prayer. And I was like, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. Nobody's praying. Nobody's praying at 4 o'clock. And he said, no, that's the call to prayer. So I asked him to translate what it was saying. And as he translated it, I just remember this deep, ah, like two things came over me. One, I was like, wow, they must really love God that they're announcing his name like across the city everywhere. And then uh, I felt a deep sense of like, I, I want to be by myself. I need to be alone. I don't know what that feeling was, but so I ran upstairs to my room and I sat on the floor. I remember I just cried and I started to pray. And I said, Lord, I know two things about you today. I said, number one, I know that these people love you because they got up before the sun gets up to pray to you. So they greet you before the sun gets up. So I was like, so they must love you. I've worshiped you my whole life and I've never gotten up before the sun comes up. And then I was like, you love them because you taught them your name. Like, we just call you God, but they know your name. So you told them your name. And so that was, that was huge um, for me. Then uh, we left after leaving Morocco. We went to Senegal. I was living with a Muslim family. And that Muslim family, there were just so many things. Like, I, you know, honestly, just interaction after interaction, just the small interactions with the family uh, begin to show me what Islam looked like in reality. Then... Um, I remember I saw them make sujood for the first time. And to be honest, when I saw them make sujood, prostration, there's a verse in the Bible that talks about Jesus uh, prostrated in the Garden of Gethsemane. And so I used to, I was raised as a Christian, as a practicing Christian, and I had been shown many times, like, you know, several times what that prostration looked like. And I remember then saying, I don't think that's what it looked like. I don't know why, but that's not what it looked like. So I remember when... My, the family that I was staying with, the host family, went into sujood and salah and prostration. I remember this feeling of like, oh, that's what it looks like. That's, that's what it is. Uh, so I came back after uh, being with that family for a while, came back to the States, and I, I fell into a very deep depression. I fell into like, like just a very deep, deep sadness where I missed them and everything about them. I was like, I miss that sound, that song they sing, and then all they, they line up and they're gonna fall down together. I, I just missed it. And not only that, because when I was there, Ramadan came, 
so I was like, I missed the, I just missed all of it, you know, Ramadan, Eid, the family, how it works. I was like, I just miss it. So, and I couldn't make my life make, make sense after that experience versus before. There were just too many things. I was like, this just doesn't, it doesn't work anymore. So I decided one day I was in school. Please, people uh, who are in school, don't do this. Don't try this at home. <laughs> I, um, I was in school. I went to the front desk, and I was like, can you find me anything on Islam, Muslims, Muhammad, Abdullah, anything like that. <laughs> and so she, the secretary looked up. She's like, I found the Islamic Center of D.C., and I skipped school, like I said, don't do this at home. I skipped school and went to the Islamic Center, caught the bus and went to the Islamic Center. And I used to go there like every day for a month. Like I would just go there, sit there. I was like, they're gonna sing my favorite song, <laughs> right there, Ben. I was like, they're gonna sing that song, they're gonna line up, they're gonna do that thing I love and my life is gonna be whole again. And so then there was um, a woman there, her name was Karima, love bless her. She came to me and she's like, you look young you look like you're supposed to be in school right and she was like why aren't you in school and i was like i can't explain it but when i'm here i i feel peaceful and i can like think i'm not sad i'm not in my depression like i'm okay but when i leave i can't i can't fix it <laughs> and so um she said okay listen there's a class every sunday you come on sunday and then you know don't don't miss school so I was like, Sunday? Because oh I went to church every Sunday. We went Sunday morning uh, for service. Sometimes we went for Bible study in the afternoon. Like, Sunday, I could not imagine telling my mother I was not going to church on Sunday. So I remember being like on the whole bus ride home, like, oh God, please tell me. God, I'm going to tell my mom. So finally, uh, I don't know what gave me the courage. That Sunday, I was like, I'm not going to church. My mom was like, what? Do you have a doctor's note? <laughs> you have like you have you have some proof of your sickness. Um, but I started to tell her like you know about this class, and she said, you know what? If it's gonna make you feel better, if you're gonna get out of this, you know, sadness that you're in, this space you're in, then fine, just go. Wow. And so I started attending the class every Sunday, and inside the class, um, one day in my mind, I was like, I'll just attend the class because my parents were like, listen, if you think you're gonna be Muslim. Like, I don't know what you're doing. You're exploring, you're researching, that's fine. But being Muslim, no, no, <laughs> right? Like, don't go that far. So I remember thinking like after college, like when I'm, when I'm out of the house, then I'll be Muslim. But that sister's husband, uh, Brother Suleiman, Allah, he said to me at the time, uh, he told me a narration of a man who came to the Prophet and he told, he wanted to take Shahada, but he said, once you move to Medina, when you migrate to Medina, then I will follow you, and then I'll take Shahada. And so, but he died along the way. He never made it to Medina. So he said, so what you don't know, you could leave here today and you could die. You don't know your state. You don't know what could happen. And he's like, so would you, would you rather die fearing Allah or fearing your family? So at that moment, I was like, all right, but what do I say? What do I do? <laughs> Let's, give it to me, Shaykh. Give it what to do me, I do? give it to me right now. Give it to me right now. And so that was the moment I took Shahada. Allah. That's a very beautiful story. And there's a couple of things that you mentioned that I can that resonate with me. And although not through my personal experience, but through what people have told me. So I have a few, uh, many non-Muslim colleagues. And one of them mentioned that he went and worked in the Gulf. Mm -hmm. And he didn't specify which country. But no one told him about the Adhan. <laughs> and at around 4 a.m., he wakes up in a startle and all he hears is Allahu Akbar Allah and he's like what is yes, this what chant is and he was like like you said I've heard this thing before in Hollywood in the movies and he was terrified he called his friends in, in that country and he was like hey guys what is going on is this a call for war and they're like dude chill it's 4am you know it's, a, it's just a call to prayer right. and he was like wait what and then how often does this happen five times a day what and it just really blew his mind. Yeah. Wow. And the second thing is calling it a chant or singing, because no one really knows what to call it. Right. And then like, oh, what is that? That is that singing thing you do. Is that chanting thing you do? And it takes Muslims like oh, a minute to go singing. We don't. Ah. But, <laughs> ah man, okay, I got you, bro. Yeah. But Subhanallah, like from that, it really caught your attention. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that also draws a very good example to what's happening in the World Cup yeah. now in Qatar, for Sorry. example, mm -hmm. where so many people they have this uh, this concept this. Uh, perception about Islam, 
and they go there and they hear the adhan and they, they see the hospitality and they go to the masjid mm -hmm. and it's just a complete 180 degree turn from what they used to think. Yeah. So mashallah, it's yeah. very nice to see that also in person. <laughs> I also have a funny story about the adhan. So when um, I, when I, you know, this is odd, but when I was young, my mother used to tell me about her gynecologist, which I know people are like, that's odd. She, she would tell me about her OBGYN, who was um, Dr. Mujaddidi, who was the one who delivered me. Okay. And so she would tell me stories about him and how much she really liked him. And he was so nice. And how, you know, on the day that he delivered me, he asked to hold me. And she's like, and he said something to you, you know, and I don't know what it was. She's like, I think he prayed for you. And, you know, and that was it. So she would tell me the story. So when I became Muslim, my mother was like, Dr. Mujaddidi. <laughs> Um, Did he call the adhan in your ear? But, but subhanAllah, I remember that feeling though of like when I heard the adhan for the first time, mm. it felt like I was a baby taking my first breath. Mm. So, Allahu Anam, may Allah bless Dr. Mujaddidi. Ameen, inshallah. We'll make dua for him wherever he is today, inshallah.